Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Alaa Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansour University. Let us discuss some uh, clinical quiz in gynecology and start with the first question. Identify this instrument and mention one indication. Look to this picture, please. This is hysterosalpingogram cannula, metal cannula or olive cannula. This is used for doing a hysterosalpingogram to identify tubal patency in cases with infertility. Also, hysterosalpingogram can identify intracavitary lesions inside the uterus like submucous myoma, endometrial polyp, and Usherman syndrome. So, this is Hystro salpingogram metal cannula. Okay. Go to the next question. Comment on this image and identify the pathology. As you see in this image, this is hystero salpingogram. And both tubes, the right and the left tube, show dilatation what's called hydrosalpix so this is a case of bilateral hydrosalpix detected by hysterosalpingogram there is no uterine lesion but the pathology in both tubes bilateral hydrosalpix If this lady has an infertility, the best management is to do uval disconnection and exit. Okay. Identify this instrument and dimension three indications. This instrument is tenaculum or single tooth volcellum this single tooth volcellum used to do traction on the anterior lip of the cervix during dilatation of the cervix using Heger dilator during insertion of ID during doing history salpingogram during during perform uh, performing uh, dilatation and the carotage and in many gynecologic surgery. Okay, there are many indications as I said. Let us go to the next question. Define this maneuver and its value. What is this maneuver? As you see here, this speculum is inserted, vaginal metal speculum is inserted, and this colposcopy. And as you know, colposcopy used for what? For evaluation of the portion of the cervix, especially the transformation zone for screening for cervical carcinoma. Okay? So colposcopy is used for screening and also for taking a biopsy from suspicious lesion suspected by colposcopy. You can take punch biopsy. Also, you can do management while doing colposcopy also by cryotherapy for some suspicious cases of CIN3. Okay? So, this is colposcopy. And the service here appear in the upper picture here. This is a portion and transformation zone. Also, colposcopy can be used for evaluation of other benign lesions like cervical polyp, like cervical warts, genital warts, like human papilloma virus warts. Okay. Okay, next question define this maneuver and its value. Okay, look to the, this picture. Here, there is cervical smear. 
using cytoprush. As you see in the, this picture, this is the cytoprush at the external os. Rotate it 360 degree once or twice. Then withdraw and spread on slide and use fixator and send for BAP test. So this is cervical smear for cytological evaluation. Also used for screening of cervical carcinoma and detecting of the precancerous lesion, cervical intramycelial neoplasia. Okay, go to the next question. Identify this maneuver and its value. As you see in this picture, this is combined BV and the BR examination. You may need BV and the BR uh, examination in cases with interior seal, rectus seal. In case of rectus seal, the mass will be between the two fingers. In case of interior seal, the mass is coming up, hitting the tip of the finger in the vagina. And the nothing in the wall, the posterior wall of the vaginal wall or anterior rectal wall. But in case of rectal seal, the posterior vaginal wall and the, and, the, and the anterior rectal wall herniates through the vagina and between these two fingers. So I can differentiate between anterior seal, which is a herniation of Douglas pouch, and rectal seal. Okay. Also, can identify any lesions related to the posterior vaginal wall and the anterior rectal wall. So, this is combined BV and the BR examination. Okay. Go to the next question. Identify this maneuver and its value. This maneuver is by manual examination, which is one important item in pelvic examination is to do by manual examination. Its value is to evaluate the uterus and the appendix. The uterus for its position, size, okay? And if there is tenderness with the mobility of the cervix or tenderness in the uterus, any mass like fibroid, or enlarged uterus due to other causes than fibroid like adenomyosis. Okay? And you should comment also on the consistency of the uterus. And if it is symmetrically enlarged or asymmetrically enlarged. And the position of the uterus if it is AVF, like this picture, or RVF. Okay? Then go to the adenexy. Try to palpate the adenexy for any ovarian mass, and of course you should comment on the ovarian mass or tube ovarian mass. Okay. Go to the next question. Identify this instrument and mention three indication for its use. This is a metal right angle vaginal retract. This is a metal right angle vaginal retract. Okay, one of them has a long plate, can be used for the posterior vaginal wall, for the traction of the posterior vaginal wall, and the shorter plate is used for the anterior vaginal wall retraction, because we know that the posterior vaginal wall is longer than the anterior vaginal wall, okay? So... This is right angle metal vaginal retractor. What is the indication for its use? It is used for exploration of the portion of the cervix during many procedures like evaluation of cervical tear, repair of cervical tear, okay? Many gynecologic surgery, I can use it for cervical polypectomy, for example. Okay. So, this vaginal retractor is used 
with many gynecologic surgery related to cervix. And of course, another indication during doing McDonald surgery in case of cervical incompetence. Let us go to the next question. What are the items of the menstrual history? Menarche, which is the first menstruation in the girl life. Cycle rhythm, whether regular or irregular. Cycle length from the first day of one cycle to the first day of the next cycle. Duration of the menstrual flow. Character of flow. Dysmenorrhea, positive or negative. Interministerial period, is it free from pain, bleeding, or discharge or not? And if there is use of contraception in the previous six months, it is taken in the menstrual history. And lastly, the first day of last normal menstrual period. This is the items of the menstrual history. Let us go to the next question. Mention five possibilities of endometrial biopsy detected by DNC in a patient complaining of postmenopausal bleeding. We know that there are many causes for postmenopausal bleeding, and the endometrial biopsy may reveal atrophic endometrium or endometrial hyperplasia or endometrial carcinoma or uterine sarcoma or endometrial polyp or atypical endometrial hyperplasia or non-atypical, okay? So, I have different causes for endometrial postmenopausal bleeding. The most common cause is the atrophic endometritis. But the most important cause is endometrial carcinoma. So there is a difference between the uh, most common one, which is atrophic endometritis, and the most important one. The most important one is endometrial carcinoma because it is a malignancy. Okay? But the commonest is atrophic endometrial. Go to the next question. What is the definition of is peronia. This is a recurrent or persistent genital pain associated with sex during intercourse and not caused exclusively by lack of lubrication or by vaginal space. This is the proper definition of dysparonia and it could be superficial or deep dysparonia. Okay? Mention five causes of dysparonia. Accordingly, is it superficial or deep? Superficial, usually the problem related to the vaginal enteritis, narrow enteritis, vulvitis. Okay, but other causes of dyspareunia include endometriosis, DID, pelvic inflammatory disease, uterine prolapse, retroverted uterus, uterine fibroid, twisted ovarian cyst. This is my two textbook published on Amazon. You can go to the Amazon and search for textbook of obstetrics and gynecology, which belong to me. Thank you. I'm Dr. Alam Muspah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of medicine, one school.